Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound. Today I'm showing you the Pittsburgh Modular Life Forms Foundation 4. So it comes with this case and a lid that locks and you can leave all the patch cords in it if you want, uh, plugged in. And it is 208 HP width, which means that uh, there are two rows of 104 HP. And normally with the Foundation 4, you only get these modules that are in the top half. I've added two. I've added the Lifeforms Micro Sequencer, uh, which has an eight-step sequence. Uh, you can change the direction, uh, your clocks, you can change length, your scales. You can do all different kind of patterns, whether it plays forward or backwards or random or staggers back and forth. Some really cool things, and all that can be adjusted from the front panel. I'm also using the 1010 Music Synth Box, uh, but I've actually got it configured as the Effects Box because you can make this be any of those boxes with an SD card so I have the software for S FX box. Uh, and why am I doing that? Just because I like to have effects when I demonstrate something. Uh, but I will only use that on the intro and the outro and maybe somewhere in the middle I might use it if I'm sweeping filters or something to show you. Other than that you'll only be hearing this top row and every once in a while the notes will be coming from that. I'll also be adding a, a MIDI keyboard uh, a little bit later on. So this system is both unique and useful in that it has elements of East Coast as well as West Coast synthesis. And what do I mean by that? Well, by East Coast, I'm talking about the fact that it has dual oscillators that do square and saw and sine uh, and can do pulse. Uh, you've got filters with resonance that do high pass, band pass, uh, low pass. Uh, you've got your standard ADSRs uh, and you've got VCA. So if you're familiar with that stuff, it's very useful. But it also has things from the West Coast. What do I mean by that? Uh, you have contour, the ability to have dynamic response of the timbre of an oscillator. Um, you have these dynamic input filter uh, devices and you have dynamic response for various things and you have lots of quick switch control for flipping between modulation sources and the two of them combined make a very powerful tool for creating something that's neither east nor west or some combination of the both um, and then again I mentioned that I have the micro sequencer that I've added to this that just kind of gave me a little melody in the beginning and the end there and um, so now let's talk about it a little bit all right, to start the audio path, we're gonna begin with the double helix oscillator. I'm gonna come out of the sine wave out, go right to the output and just sweep the frequencies. We'll do the same with the sawtooth wave. And blade. sub out. All right, so now I'm going to use the contour module here, and I'm basically going to take the sine wave, which is normaled to input one, and then so I'm just going to take the output of that back to our output over here. So you can see you can get a lot of variation out of a wave by playing with the contour. And because that can be modulated with a control voltage, you could use an LFO or an envelope or something else to modulate that as well. All right, now we're gonna take a sawtooth wave and go into the binary filter, one of two. And we're gonna take the low pass out 
and back into the output. And as you can hear, I can change resonance. And that's currently in stable mode. I can do it in unstable mode. Definitely some different things from that. Um, here's the same thing uh, as a bandpass. And as a high pass. Now we'll control that filter with an ADSR. And for a trigger, I will use this clock out. Same with band pass and high pass. So now I'm going to use uh, the contour, uh, but this time I'm going to use the dynamic response uh, as triggered by uh, this little LFO here. And then play with the timbre. If I wanted to, I could sweep that with something else here. And so uh, for utility things, um, we've got two splitters. Basically, you put a single in, and then you get three outs to go anywhere you want. Um, they can be control voltages. They could be audio. And then down here, you got a mixer, which is very interesting. You can have two separate ins. They will both mix to these two outputs. So you can either use it as a splitter for two things or a mixer for two things. And over here we have some various modulation sources, um, some analog logic where we're doing sample and hold on noise to get that standard random. Um, we've got some other multifunction analog logic things going on here. Uh, definitely give you lots of crazy outputs and then more of a standard LFO with square and sine wave. Now we're going to go to the, look at the voltage controlled routers. It basically lets you take an A input, a B input. Uh, they can be uh, normal to various things or you can add your own things. Uh, we're going to come out of the contour out and send some various modulators to the contour. <laughs> It's just a very cool way of having multiple things ready to go and you can just flip them in, you can set their depths. Like I said, some of them are automatic, but you can also put in whichever ones you want. And you've got other modulation sources like Analog Logic. Uh, we'll take Blade out and send a mix of that logic to the pitch. And 
we can do sample and hold. Just the thing you want for your boops and bleeps. All right, now I'm gonna take a sawtooth out and I'm gonna go into a VCA, which does my volume, and I'm coming uh, out of that into the outputs. And I'm gonna change the volume of the VCA with the output of this ADSR. The ADSR is coming from the clock from this tap tempo over here. And I'm also gonna run a sequencer. So I'm gonna run the pitch out of my sequencer into the oscillator. And then I'm gonna connect this output of the ADSR to this control voltage in and it should go. As you can hear, it's very fast. Okay, now I'm gonna take the blade output, and this time I'm gonna go into the dynamic impulse filter. So far sounds normal, but I'm gonna take the clock into the dynamic CP input. And I can control both the filter and the VCA together or just VCA or just the filter. And it's particularly good for percussive things. You get a really nice tight percussive sound. So now this modulator has independent rise and fall times, and I'm using it to go to the filter. Uh, so I'm gonna do some craziness with that. So I'm gonna go into that coming from the clock and then back out going to the filter, but this time with independent rise and fall times. All right, so now I'm going to come out of the pulse again, but this time, instead of controlling the pitch with the knob or the sequencer, I'm going to control it with this Mini Brute 2 by Arturia. I'm coming MIDI out of that into this MIDI in, and I'm going to take the control voltage that represents the pitch into the oscillator. I can play that, but the notes don't go away, so I'm going to take the gate out and put that into an ADSR. And I'll have standard ADSR functions. And I can put this, instead of being in a mono mode or a duo mode, I can put it into an arpeggiator mode. And I can even hold it. So that's just a quick look at the Pittsburgh Modular Lifeforms Foundation 4 rig. If you have any further questions about Pittsburgh Modular or the Lifeforms or the Foundation 4, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching. If you like these kind of videos, uh, we're going to be doing a lot more Eurorack stuff. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.